Good afternoon. Welcome to Trojans as Trojans Networking Day. Before we get started, we'll go over a few housekeeping rules. Please ensure your video and audio have been muted. Please use the Q&A feature to ask any questions. Some of our speakers may use the polling function, which will populate on your screen. And also please note this webinar is being recorded. Thank you for joining Trojans of Trojans Networking Day. I'm Tanya Moran Adolph, Associate Director of Generational Programs. Before we begin, I'd like to welcome Patrick Auerbach, Senior Associate Vice President of the USC Alumni Association. Thank you, Tanya, and good afternoon, Trojans, our Trojan family. First of all, we wanna thank everybody for being here with us. We understand that one o'clock Pacific time or from whichever time zone you're joining us on a Thursday might not be the most uh, ideal or convenient time, but this is the second time we're offering this program today and we were really pleased with the go around the first time and we hope this one will be even better. Uh, Want to welcome everybody to Trojans to Trojans Networking Day and we're really excited to have so many hundreds of our new grads. Congratulations to our class of 2020 grads who are joining us today and we literally have thousands of alumni out of our total of 436,000 alumni around the world who are waiting to help you as you look to build out and activate your Trojan network. This is a very wonderful program that we have uh, here for you today. It was just shown on the screen. And we just wanted to thank everybody and offer you encouragement. The Trojan family is here for you. If you have graduated in the last few weeks, once again, congratulations. You are now a member of the USC Alumni Association. And please be on the lookout for emails and snail mail once the pandemic subsides with more information on your membership. But your Trojan network and your Trojan family are here for you now. Whether you need just a little bit of advice, whether you need a little more of a lengthy mentorship arrangement, we are here for you. You're gonna learn many uh, exciting skills today and um, some walkthroughs and how-tos on how to utilize this platform. So again, we wanna thank all of you. And uh, I will now turn it back over to Tanya who will continue with today's program. Congratulations and once again, fight on. Thank you, Patrick. For our schedule of events today, we'll first start off with virtual reality, navigating working from home to networking. Next up at 1.30, we'll be speaking different languages, networking across generations. And at two o'clock, maximizing your digital presence in the Trojan network. Our first uh, webinar today is virtual reality, navigating networking to working from home. The job landscape is moving into the digital world from an increase in virtual networking to employees working from home permanently. Our speaker, Shireen Jaffer, will share tips for success in navigating the new virtual reality. A little bit about Shireen. Shireen is a second time founder, Forbes 30 Under 30, and CEO of Edvo, a venture-backed startup in Los Angeles that empowers people with the tools to navigate life better. Shireen, Shireen has worked with hundreds of companies from Fortune 500s to early stage startups, advising them on recruiting and hiring practices. She has helped over 50,000 people in their job search over the last 10 years from recent grads to executives and is passionate about helping people build meaningful careers and lives. Welcome, Shireen. Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. It is so good to have all of you here. Um, I'm really excited to spend the next 30 or so minutes with you and just giving you advice, insight, motivation as we all navigate our careers and our job search in this new normal. Um, I'm going to do a quick screen share so all of you can see my screen. Um, again, thank you so much for that introduction. Uh, I'm Shereen Jaffer. Um, I've essentially done two main things in my career over the last uh, 10 or so years. Uh, number one has been, I've been fortunate enough to help now over 50,000 people find meaningful work. Uh, that's something that's always been a passion of mine is how do I get people to jobs they actually want uh, in environments where they thrive and uh, frankly, careers that also fulfill their lifestyle requirements, the compensation you want to be making, the location, um, the type of working style. So I've been able to, again, help thousands of people do that. And 
uh, everything from, you know, a 15 year old trying to find an internship that fits his or her requirements to, you know, executives well into their career. So wherever you are right now, as far as your career is concerned, um, I hope I can give you some advice that really resonates. And the second thing I've been able to do in my career is help companies. Um, so, you know, when it comes to companies and their hiring, um, recruiting practices and hiring practices, unfortunately, haven't changed significantly um, over the decade. However, in recent years, it's been changing quite a bit. So I've been able to be an advisor to, again, early stage startups that want to do things a little differently, as well as Fortune 500s and really helping them hire in the best way and find really good people uh, for their team. So if you, as you're thinking about questions to ask me, if you're wondering what the heck is going on in these recruiters and in these hiring managers heads right now, and why are they reacting the way they're reacting, anything like that, feel free to write that question down, put it in the Q&A, and I'll make sure we get to it uh, throughout our time today. So I wanted to really start with a quick reflection. Uh, we're now three months in um, as far as quarantine is concerned. So, you know, when it comes to working from home, being at home, um, most of us are spending way more time than we ever did in our, you know, apartments, our homes, our dorm rooms, whatever it may be. So what I really encourage us doing, and because I know I have 30 minutes today, um, I'm going to allow you to do this reflection on your own, but I really encourage you to ask yourself four questions, at least to start with. Number one, ask yourself, what's really changed for you? Looking back in, you know, for the last three months, I've been thinking about this a lot, um, just for myself. You know, I used to be on a plane every single weekend um, or every other week. I was traveling uh, internationally. I was traveling to different parts of our country. All of a sudden, I'm not traveling anymore. I'm not commuting any anymore. So much time for me has opened up and I'm spending it in a completely different way than I was three months ago. So think about what are the things that have changed for you, both positive or negative, right? Um, but really start with um, what that's been like. And then think about, well, what's bothering you? What's better in those changes um, and you know, this new normal that you're confronting? What is actually um, things that you're really enjoying? Um, I was just telling my husband, you know, I, some parts, some parts, not all parts, but some parts um, of working from home has been beautiful. Um, Edvo, my second company, we always had a flexible um, learning environment. We actually have an office. We have a private office and a we work right across the street, but we never forced people to come and work in an office. That was just never our style. So, you know, it's always been flexible, but knowing that I had my people in the office put pressure on me to also show up before we got into quarantine. And now that everyone's remote, we're all working, I realize I'm way more productive. My team is way more productive, not in the office, which was an incredible um, learning moment for us. So, you know, for me, that's something that's better as far as my career is concerned. Of course, there's a lot of personal things. My husband and I are spending way more time together. Uh, my dog, who's actually on my lap right now, <laughs> um, she's way less anxious because now we're home. So, you know, things like that, they're better. But there are also things that bother us. Um, I don't love that I'm outside and I, I can really only walk outside for you know a specific amount of time, right? So there's definitely things that have been bothering me both personally and professionally. So definitely do a reflection there. And then what have you learned about yourself during these three months? I think this has been a really powerful moment for us um, to reflect on how we react to change, how we react to obviously the challenges we're facing as a society. So what have you learned? Um, and that also will give you a really good um, awareness, self-awareness going into our new normal, uh, which we'll talk about in just a second. So to recap, I just recommend asking yourself these four questions to just start off with and then see where that reflection takes you. And I also encourage you to have those conversations with your friends, your families, your colleagues, whoever you're around, um, and just kind of see how other people are feeling. And the next thing I wanna really talk about, so we'll, we'll confront about four to five common questions I've been getting from people as we're navigating this new normal. So uh, part of my work, I have pretty much doing webinars and conversations and virtual events like this pretty much every week. Um, just last week, I think 
Monday through Friday, I did seven events. <laughs> um, so fortunately, I get a lot of questions that I can then, you know, put into my future presentations because I know multiple hundreds of people are thinking about the same same questions. So, uh, really, our presentation the next twenty minutes or so today, um, let's talk about these common questions that I've been getting. And then again, as you are thinking of questions, things come up. Please put them in the Q and A, and we'll have some time at the end to get to those as well. All right, so number one, how do I actually navigate working from home? So some of you, um, you know, maybe you're on the job search, uh, but all of a sudden, instead of maybe having a coffee shop to go to or a WeWork to go to, you might be now at home doing your job search full time, which having helped thousands of people approach their job search. I know the job search is not fun. <laughs> um, I know it can be really frustrating. It's, it's not the most incredible experience. So how do you do that when you're also now, you know, in at home a lot of the time? Um, or some of you might be doing internships or actually, you know, you have full-time jobs or have your own businesses or be freelancing or having some side hustles, whatever it may be. How do you actually do that productively at home? So I've got essentially like five to six tips that I often share with people in my community that has really, really helped them in the last few months. Number one, start thinking about the timeline of this new normal. Do you see yourself working from home pretty consistently going forward? Uh, with the pandemic, right, there's a lot of things out there that, um, are a little conflicting, right? Is this our new normal? Are people, you know, things are opening up. Does that mean things are going to be open up, you know, fully back to what it was pre-COVID? Um, are offices going to be back to, you know, are people going to work in offices again full time? Um, I think a lot of companies are showing, well, you know what? We recognize people were way more productive at home. So we'll allow flexible working. So more companies are embracing remote, learn, uh, remote working, even if it's not full-time remote working. So just be aware of what's actually going on because as you're job searching, um, whatever your industry might be embracing right now, it's very different for every industry. Just do a quick check-in on what that reality could look like for you for the next six or so months. And the best way to do that, by the way, is just talk to people. Talk to people who are in that in your industry. Um, if you're just now starting out, you might not know what the old normal even was, let alone the new normal. So just go and talk to people, and we'll talk about networking and how to actually reach out to people and whatnot. But um, having an understanding of that reality will help you obviously prepare for it. So that's step number one. Step number two is, you know, at home. Some of us live, you know, don't even have space for an actual desk setup, right? Um, and, and that's okay. We have to be aware of that. But working from bed or working from a couch also may not make us feel the, you know, our best selves. Um, so it also starts with recognizing, well, what type of setup do you need at home um, that allows you to get in the zone, that allows you to get into the mindset? Because frankly, mindset has to do with most of this um, when it comes to, you know, feeling good when you're working um, or whatever you're choosing to do during, you know, at, at home. So uh, my advice there is if you don't have the ability to have like a nice, you know, desk and a monitor and all of that, you don't need that. I was living a few years back, I was literally living in um, a two bedroom apartment with five people because you know, we were trying to save money and do all of that. Um, and this was me pretty much like right out of college. And I had a one bedroom apartment with three girls. So I was one of the three. And we literally had like this really bizarre U-shaped like bed configuration and no space for an actual desk setup or anything like that. But I was also starting my business at the time. So I needed to do a lot of video conferencing. I needed to do a lot of webinars. Um, so I needed to make sure that at least I had a space that got me in the right mindset, even when I couldn't afford to have a full desk setup. So you know what I did? I literally put in the corner of a room uh, where it was just a blank wall. Um, I didn't even have space to put up a chair. All I did was take a pillow, put two pillows on the ground so, you know, my butt didn't get tired sitting on the ground all day. And then on the back, I hung up a little painting. But when you saw it on a video conference, it looked like I was actually sitting in a normal sized desk and a chair and had this like beautiful big painting. But really it was like tiny and the ratio just worked out where 
it made me feel like when I was on the conference call, it made me get into the mindset of, okay, cool. I've got this little nook. Um, and even though, and I made sure it was comfortable, right? Like obviously being comfortable is really important, but I had the space for myself. And that really is important as you're navigating working from home, just having that space to yourself, whatever that space looks like, um, just embracing it and claiming it as this is my space where I feel X, Y, and Z way, whatever you feel like you need to feel when you're working. Um, so set that up, right? And if you do, of course, have the ability to set up a desk and do all of that good stuff, great, make it your own, but really get into that habit of having that little nook for yourself. Number three, when it comes to navigating working from home, things can get awkward really quickly. You might have your mom, or if you have kids or siblings, or you live with um, roommates, right? There's inevitably, there will be a time where someone interrupts this like video conference you have going on. Um, so if you are, you know, if you're job searching and you've got virtual interviews, or if you have a job and you're doing virtual meetings, whatever that is, recognize that people are embracing this new normal and things that used to be awkward aren't so awkward anymore. Um, working from your PJs, working from, it depends on your industry, of course, and obviously in your interview, you're not going to show up in your PJs, but people are more empathetic people are more understanding than ever before. So that said, embrace the awkward, which again, I don't even think is awkward anymore. It's just the new normal. Um, for example, if you're going into an interview, um, give you know your interviewer a heads up beforehand, uh, email them and say, hey, just FYI, I do live with roommates. And while I, you know, you know, I have prepared to make sure there's no interruptions, just to not make it awkward in case this happens, if there is an interruption, I apologize in advance, right? Give people a heads up like that. I've, I've said this to a lot of my, um, you know, a lot of people that I'm coaching that are parents who have kids that just run in and you can't necessarily lock the door. Um, I tell them just own it. And they've responded to me, they've emailed me, you know, weeks later said, oh my gosh, I used your advice. I did this in an interview and it completely changed. It actually made the interviewer feel more comfortable. The first thing they mentioned when we got on the interview was, Thanks so much for giving them that heads up. I just had my kids totally, you know, uh, bombard one of my interviews the other day. So it, it allows that wall to come down as well. And then lastly, my step here from navigating working from home is, you know, because we're at home and, you know, if we obviously, hopefully we all feel comfortable at home, but, you know, working from bed, working around our bed, working around our kitchen, it obviously puts us in a mindset of, oh, I kind of just want to chill out. I want to relax. Um, and it might make us procrastinate a little bit. So if you're someone struggling with procrastination while navigating working from home, I recommend looking up the two-minute procrastination advice. Um, if you Google it, it'll pop up. But literally, it's how can you help get yourself doing things by just saying, hey, what can I do that only takes two minutes, right? So maybe you've got a project that you know will take you hours to do and you just don't want to do it. Just ask yourself, well, what can I do that only takes two minutes that's related to this project? And it might be as simple as like sending one email or literally Googling one thing that you're researching, right? But you'll notice, and a lot of research shows this, just kickstarting yourself with that two minute step often leads to 30 minutes of productivity. So uh, I recommend Googling that. And those four things will really help you get in the right mindset, own your new normal, um, and really help yourself be more productive while you're at home. Second most important uh, or common question I get is, okay, well, you know, I'm job searching or I'm in my career. Maybe I'm thinking of a career change. Maybe I'm thinking of my own business. How do I network and build meaningful relationships virtually? Few things here. Number one, this is arguably the best time to be networking. And here's why. People are feeling similar things for the first time in a very long time. Everyone's kind of in it. Everyone gets it. Everyone understands what's happening and what our new reality looks like. So people are empathetic. People have their walls down. People have said, all right, I want to help everyone. I want to help each other out. I need help. So people are willing to build relationships now more than ever. I will tell you, as someone who networks all the time, I've attended more virtual networking events in the last three months than I did all of last year. And I'm not exaggerating. It's because we have more time. We genuinely want to help other people. We genuinely want to connect. We might be a little lonely at home, so we might be craving those relationships. Um, so right now is arguably the best time to be networking. 
well, how can you actually find networking events to go to and networking hangouts to go to? Um, there's a lot. If you have not heard of Substack, S-U-B-S-T-A-C-K, Substack, it's a new newsletter publishing platform. But a lot of great newsletters are coming out that share curated resources for people during this time. I have one that I send out every single Thursday, so one's going out today, but I share every single week a list of companies that are hiring right now lists of virtual hangouts that are happening for job seekers, for marketers, for designers, for folks in the fashion industry. I share hangouts that are happening that oftentimes most are free or donation based. So there are plenty of people creating these curated resources that can help you know, well, what hangouts can I show up at? And by the way, those are the hangouts that will help you become more comfortable with even talking to strangers over video chat in these small, intimate groups. And once you do that, then you can obviously start reaching out to people and doing one-on-one -on -one virtual coffees, virtual chat sessions, things like that. Um, obviously, I could talk for two hours on how do you actually reach out to people? What do you say? How do you find people to reach out to? How do you approach the first conversation? So if, that's, if those are where your questions are, go to edvo.com. Literally last week, I published a guide called um, Networking During Uncertain Times, um, where we answered all of those questions. So go check that out. Everything's free, obviously, um, and hopefully that will help you. And if, obviously, if you have questions on that, feel free to uh, ping me directly. Uh, the next thing I'll talk about is how do I actually stay productive during this time? I think it's time for us to redefine productivity for ourselves. Some of us, um, I had this conversation with my husband. We were go, 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 go for so long that when quarantine hit, um, we don't really watch TV, um, but we realized for us being productive is actually sleeping more. <laughs> it's actually like taking more time to reflect and feel into things and know what are we working towards and why and talk to more people. That to us is productive. If, you know, I'm sure on social media, you've been seeing these like, things going around. If you don't come out of quarantine with a new skill and with a new hobby, you've been wasting your time. I think that's silly. I think that's very applicable to some people. Absolutely. If you feel like to be productive based on what you've been up to, based on what you're doing, yeah, you should be learning and or you feel like you need to be learning a new skill. You feel like you need to be exploring a new hobby. Great. Good for you. Do that. If you feel like for you to be productive is actually taking a minute pausing, sleeping more, getting a workout in, whatever it is, um, define productivity for you based on what you know about yourself. And I promise you by taking a few minutes, not just a minute, taking a few minutes and doing a check-in and saying, what am I actually feeling right now? What do I actually need to do right now? It will help you come up with your definition of productive. And by the way, your definition of productivity might change over time as well. Um, this week, by the way, productivity to me, my eye has been twitching nonstop for the last two weeks, which tells me my body might be stressed or I might be getting too much screen time. So for me, my definition of productivity this week has been, I got to sleep more. I got to chill out more. I got to spend more time with my dog. I got to go more on more walks. I need to listen to good music that fills me. I need to listen to more podcasts that I actually want to listen to. That's been my defi definition this week. Last week, it was totally different. Next week, I'm going to be an aunt soon. So I'm flying out this weekend to Miami for my nephew. Next week, my productivity will probably be spend more time with my family and my brother and whatnot. So define productivity for yourself. So to recap, and now we'll open up to questions, when it really comes to navigating this new reality from working from home to feeling more productive to networking, it all comes down to, it all starts with really taking a minute and saying, well, what do you need for the next three to six months based on where you're at right now, your job search, whether you're working full time, what do you need right now? And how do you want to define those things for yourself? How do you need to define, create the environment for yourself at home to be your best self? What type of relationships do you want to build in the next three to six months? And how can you start taking those actions now, knowing that people are open more than ever before to networking and building those relationships? And then again, go ahead and look at that guide on edvo.com to really give you those tangible steps and resources um, to actually start networking. And then of course with productivity, redefine it for yourself because honestly, we spend way more energy just trying to tell ourselves, oh man, I should be productive. I should be doing these things. 
I hate the word should. Instead, think about what you need to be doing for yourself, what that means for yourself, and then go ahead and figure out your plan that way. All right, so let's open it up to some questions. Um, let's see. Uh, do we want to do, let me stop my share real quick. Cool. Okay. So a lot of the questions got answered. Awesome. All right. So then in the last five minutes, I'll share um, a few other resources. Number one, um, I've been going to a lot of virtual hangouts that have been, um, there, there's hangouts that are very industry specific. And then there are hangouts that are actually more like context specific. So for example, there's one hangout that I attend every single week, just as a mentor. It's for job seekers. It's for job seekers who literally come together for one hour every single week. And it's usually different people every single week, which is really cool. Um, but they come together and they just share resources with each other. They vent about, you know, just how awful the job search process can be. Um, so when it comes to those things, know that there are virtual hangouts that aren't just, you know, hey, are you a programmer? Are you a designer? Although those exist as well and are super valuable. There are also ones that are, are you a mom um, with kids at home and you're trying to navigate working full time and then also you know, having kids or just parents in general? Are you a recent graduate who had their offer pulled um, or had their offer, you know, offer rescinded or their interviews have been paused? If you are going through that right now, there are virtual hangouts that literally specialize in, hey, recent grads, let's get together. Let's talk about the struggles that we're facing um, and let's, let's help each other out. So again, if you want, Want access to, or I mean, the access is out there, but if you can't search for them, you, you're having trouble finding them, email me, find me on LinkedIn. Um, again, every Thursday, I share lists of those resources as well. Um, so feel free to reach out to me personally, because I think right now, when it comes, whether it's, again, you have a full-time job or you're on the job search, I think just meeting people who we can network with, build genuine relationships with, and just have something in common to talk about with, that's probably the most important as far as what I've seen people have been craving and wanting and looking for. Um, so if you're resonating with any of that, I welcome you to reach out to me, um, and I'm happy to share those resources with, with some of you. Uh, hi, recent grad here. In the event that I do have an in-person interview, how can I professionally navigate it? I wouldn't be comfortable shaking hands and I'd prefer to wear a mask. That is a great question. Um, honestly, the company you're interviewing with, what I've noticed, and I've advised a lot of companies to do this, is proactively when you're scheduling an interview, they should send you, hey, this is kind of the etiquette we're following in light of everything. If they don't do that, Camille, ask them. And it actually shows that you're being responsible and considerate and aware. So email them ahead of time and just say, hey, in light of everything, you know, I've, I've noticed every company is kind of treating things a little differently. So when it comes to obviously shaking hands and mask policy and things like that, um, what is the etiquette that your office is following so that I can be aware of that? So hopefully Camille, that answers your questions. What are your favorite tools to use when building virtual relations with future colleagues, fellow alumni? What catches your eye when someone connects with you on these platforms? So LinkedIn is my go-to. LinkedIn is always my go-to. I'm super active on LinkedIn. Um, when it comes to LinkedIn, what catches my eye is have you done your research and are you personable? I get hundreds, not exaggerating, hundreds of messages every single week that say, hey, it looks like you're doing something really cool. Thank you so much for all the resources you're sharing on LinkedIn. I'd love to, you know, learn more about your story. I'm not going to, I respond to everything, but I'm not going to get on that phone call. But if you tell me, hey, Shereen, I found your TED talk and this is what really stood out to me. And by the way, here's what I'm trying to navigate. Do you have five minutes for us to chat? I'd love to know about X, Y, and Z. That shows me you did your research. That shows me you have an intention to want to talk. Uh, and I'm way more likely to get on that phone call than something I'm getting that's blanketed. Uh, do you have any tips for how to reach out to people for informational interviews? Absolutely. That's part of the networking guide that I have on edvo.com. 
It's on the front page. You'll see it. I even have a tracker that helps you keep track of all the conversations you're having, all the informational interviews you're doing, and being able to nurture those relationships. Um, that tracker is also free. So edvo.com has all those resources. Every Thursday, I also send out um, fresh resources every single week in an email. So feel free to subscribe to that. Um, now, Ashley, I think we're out of time. I know we have two more questions. So I wanted to get your advice on how you want to move forward. <laughs> yeah. So let's take one last question. And then Shireen, if you want, um, you can type the answers in the Q and a, um, before you hop up. Yeah, totally. Um, let's see. I've had many senior executives postpone coffees that were originally scheduled pre COVID. We've scheduled a few times. Um, should I continue trying to get back on their calendar or just revisit when we're back in the office? I don't want to lose the open door. Nurturing relationships is the best way to go about this. So if you see that you, you, so much rescheduling has happened, I wouldn't say stop. I wouldn't say wait until the fall, but maybe you can postpone the coffee, even if it's virtual. Um, I would, by the way, optimize for a virtual coffee than an in-person coffee during this time. If that still doesn't work out, you can wait on that until the fall, but do not just say, hey, I'll get back in touch in August. Just say, hey, you know what? Well, let's try to figure something out in August. Let's put a placeholder on the calendar. But in the meantime, I wanted to share this resource that I thought would be really interesting for you. So the best way to keep relationships going is every couple weeks or so, send them something, tag them on a post in LinkedIn that reminded you of them or their industry, something you think they might find valuable. Um, ever since I've been giving this advice out, so many people have been tagging me in different things. By the way, that's been so valuable to me because it's helped me then share those resources with others. So um, to answer your question, don't lose contact until August. You can put something on the calendar for August if you can't get a virtual coffee, but keep finding ways to nurture that relationship. All right, I hope this was helpful. Thank you, everybody. I'll continue to respond to questions in the Q&A uh, by typing them out. Uh, but again, in the meantime, if you need to reach out to me, LinkedIn is the best way to do that. Um, just search Shereen Jaffer Edvo, I'll pop up. And then edvo.com also has all the resources that I've talked about today. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Shireen. Your advice on productivity and how it's different for everyone was really, really good. We all need that reminder from time to time, don't we? Especially right Absolutely. now during the pandemic. Um, so again, thank you for your time and expertise. Our next program will begin shortly um, and we, our speaker will share tips on networking across generations. All right, thank you everybody. This is Ashley Bonanno Curley from the Alumni Association. I wanted to go ahead and introduce our next speaker, James Ward III. He's a senior manager a senior manager of communications at OWN. And we would definitely love um, to hear your take on speaking different languages, networking across generations. All right, go ahead, James. All right, thank you, Tanya, um, and thank you, the USC uh, Alumni Association and the Black Alumni Association who um, connected me to you all. Um, let me fix my screen here. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to jump right in. Um, again, my name is James Ward III, and I'm the Senior Manager of Communications at the Oprah Winfrey Network. Um, class of 2020, I'm, I know you guys have been going through the ringer. It's quite the unexpected um, situation, and now uh, with even the way we're doing this right now today, it's um, clearly different than what we normally do. So of how to network cross-generationally. The first thing is I think 
people always go to panels, you go to conferences to hear people speak. Um, like today, um, is the first thing is initially just do your research. Um, know who, who's going to be there. And by that, I don't mean just read the list. For the people who are speaking on the panels, try to find bios for them online. Try to um, find things that may give you an immediate end to speaking to them when you try to rush them after the panel, right? Um, I'll give you an example. Um, when I was an undergrad at USC, um, I was on the Sony Pictures lot in Culver City. And um, I was there visiting a friend. And I saw an executive who's at the time for Columbia Pictures. And I knew because I had just interned on um, a film that he was seeing, that he went. So I was like, oh, okay, this is perfect. Like, how do I now when, when he's by himself, I can find a way to go up to him, right? And, um, and, and kind of leverage what I know that he went to USC and like use in connection, right? So uh, when I went up to him, I said my name and I'm a student and um, you know, I, I'm at USC. Well, he goes, oh, I went to, no, I said, and you did this and said that and that. And he's like, so what I mean by that, why that's important is because it shows a genuine interest in that person. A lot of times when people um, try to network, they usually approach people with, you know, in their mind, it's usually what can this person do for me? But instead you're offering up the opportunity to show them that you've done your research, that you know who they are. Um, and you took that extra little time um, to find points of interest that would speak directly to them. Um, also, I would say, you know, the next thing would be to, why are you there, right? So if you're going to this conference, you're going to this Zoom meeting, um, what, what is your intention there? What's your purpose? Are you trying to find a job? Are you trying to find an internship? Do you just want to like establish relationships? I think being clear on why you're there is also important because that'll help guide you with how you approach people and what, um, what those entry points uh, can be with the individual. Um, the next thing would be uh, bring something to the table. Um, again, like I said, a lot of people, um, a lot of people always approach, you know, whether they're people that are more established in their careers than you are, or even your peers are doing, you know, things that you want to connect with them on and collaborate. A lot of people always, again, have that, what can you, I'm, I want to meet so that you can help me do things that I want to do. Um, but when you bring something to the table, um, that's when people, again, see your value, right? It's not just, you have to remember, so I, you know, and I didn't understand this when I was a student. I thought, oh, I'm a student, everyone help me, you know, help me, help me, help me. And sometimes people would take weeks, if not over a month to get back to me via email, um, you know, on the executive level, um, et cetera. But now that I'm in that position, um, some almost 10 years later, I understand why, you know, people are incredibly busy. Um, and sometimes, you know, I think the, the miss, I think the most misunderstood thing is when people say, Oh, I just want to sit down and pick your brain. Sitting down to pick someone's brain is often one of the most, um, it can be one of the most gnawing, <laughs> uh, environment because when you want, when you, when you have time who you think can help serve, you know, your career efforts, um, you want them to be present. And if, you know, they've got a million other things going on um, and you're asking them for 15 minutes of coffee um, without bringing anything to the table that can also help serve them and have it be a symbiotic relationship, a lot of times they're going to be distracted or even be hesitant to give you that time. So again, the, the bullet for that one, the main takeaway of that piece that I'm speaking to now is bring something to the table, um, which also lends me to the network laterally. That's one of the most important things. Um, a lot of times people think that, oh, I got to, if I want to be, um, you know, if I want to eventually run a studio, um, most of my references, just so you know, will be geared to entertainment. So that's, <laughs> that's my industry. So bear with me. Um, but if I want to be head of a studio, then I want to network with, you know, the CEO of the studio right now. I want to get to know, and people sometimes are not the best people for you, depending on what level you're at. Um, your peers are going to be your biggest advocates. Um, an example of that is um as we've all been kind of seeing if you've been following entertainment news right now amidst our current climate there is a shift happening in hollywood um, where everyone has acknowledged the lack of diversity and inclusion inside the studio and network system so um at any given studio and network whether it be abc fox wb whatever it may be all of them there are very few people of color um 
on executive level. Um, and so one thing that I did, I've been doing for the past two years, is um, prior to being at OWN, I was at a PR agency. So most of these two days are networked for my clients. Um, so to that end, and I was in the African-American division doing um, PR campaigns for um, various films and, and TV shows. So to that end, once I got it on, I uh, corralled all of the black studio and network publicists that um, I have relationships with. Um, started off with about six to eight. Now we're at 39, um, two years later. But what I do is I'm coordinating quarterly meetups for all of us just to stay connected to my job opportunities, which has happened. So and when I say network ladder, these are all people who are also manager level, director level, some VP level, um, and even some coordinator level. Um, an assistant that I brought together um, without trying to, you know, get the presidents of companies to network with, right? So I created this cohort, if you will, of black studio and network publicists um, to come together. And from that, people have left, like if one person was at Warner Brothers and they left to a job at Universal, um, they then pool of people to pull from to fill their position at Warner Brothers. And that has happened a few times within my group. Um, three people have gotten jobs from each other in this group um, just off of that connection. And so that's why networking laterally, I say, is so important um, because these are the people that you are going to rise in the ranks with, right? Um, it's your class, so to speak. Um, so the next thing is, aside from just networking, the other important thing is, and you might've heard this before, but how I see it is net worthing. Uh, Again, that ties back into the, the bullet I said earlier about bring something to the table. So with net worth, um, when it comes to the professional environment, for me, this is the most important piece of advice that I can offer, um, which the simplicity, the simplicity of it is just do the work. Um, it sounds so simple, it's three words, but do the work. Um, as an assistant um, or any other entry level position, which most of you will be embarking into, um, it's it critical to Hello, this is Tanya. We are going to hold for just a few minutes for some technical difficulties. One moment, please. Okay, uh, sorry about that. Mercury's retrograde problems are definitely gonna be a thing. Um, last thing I was saying was uh, net worthing. So um, by that, again, meaning do the work. Um, you know, as an entry level position, um, it's critical to do the best that you can to be of service with whom you report to. That's a key part of networking is, is again, in doing the work. A lot of people think networking is just social. Like I need to go to this event, I need to do that, I need to get numbers, I need to get emails. But honestly, part of the biggest part of networking is showing your net worth, what you're bringing to the table in your current position, right? So it's not just a network to get higher. No, I need to network where I'm currently at, which is showing my worth, which is why I call it your net worth. To promotions when it comes to opportunities and how you can grow and have agency within the company. Um, from there, um, you know, the other thing for entry level positions that's important to show your net worth is, um, you know, find the way to make your boss's job easier, right? So oftentimes, in your entry level, you're going to be an assistant or coordinator level, wherever you're at, and you're reporting to someone, right? Find ways that actually make um, their jobs easier. Um,
Okay. Um, looks like we're having some technical difficulties. Okay. Um, so from here, um, as I was saying, uh, make the jobs easier and make them look good for their boss for their bosses, right? So it's kind of that piling up um, the, the the food chain. Um, and so with that, I give an example. The way I people often ask me, "Oh, how did you get to the Oprah Winfrey Network? Like, you know, how did you get to work for a, a brand like that?" Um, and that was by doing the work. So when I was at a PR agency, um, I took every opportunity to speak to, to engage with the clients, to have FaceTime with the clients, to um, also, you know, go on these trips with the clients when we had to do press events and all of that. And because of that, when OWN had an opening for the man, the hiring manager at OWN contacted, uh, contacted um, my client asking, do you know of anyone? My client then referred me because why? She put her, you know, that cl my client put their, her, her stamp on me because I had shown my worth. And so that's a way to net worth. So that is one of the most key things that I can say is, is net worthing. And again, by that, I can't stress it enough. It's because I was doing the work with where I was currently at without even worrying about trying to like, who can I connect to, to get where I want to get next and have that, like, you know, that, that grit and, 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 um, and sometimes, you know, desperateness that people have when they're trying to just climb the ladder of their own success, right? I was focusing the work that I was doing currently, and that's what led me to my next position. And, um, you know, again, bringing back the generational piece, these are people who are two generations above me that saw that, right? Because I was making their jobs easier. I was making uh, their lives easier. And especially as an agency, when we're hired to help amplify the campaigns that they're doing in-house at their particular networks, um, back when I was at the agency, that helped them then go inside to their bosses, right, to show them uh, the work that they're doing. So that's the biggest piece. And then the last thing I'll, I'll, I'll close with before I open up to questions soon is um, humility. Um, that's the biggest piece that I have come to understand in terms of networking between generations, whether they be a generation below me or a generation above me, is having humility. Um, not feeling entitled to get a promotion just for doing my job description. Um, promotions are for going above and beyond, and you have to be willing to put in the work. Um, you know, I have several examples of where I had to, in my, in my words, eat some humble pie, eat a slice of humble pie. Um, you know, you may come in because you are more technically logically advanced in your younger generations typically. Um, you may come in and you may be smarter than your boss. Sometimes that happens. Um, which is then you have to do something called managing up. Um, and by, by managing up, it's almost like you have a manager, but sometimes you have to manage them, right? You get to know them, you get to know their quirks, you get to know how they work and the things you need to do to be successful um, in their eyes within that environment. Um, and so the people that you're reporting to are often from another generation. Um, they also though have experience and, and can support you um, and advocate for you at your current level um, and help you flourish in that environment if you are um, coming from a place of humility and not thinking that you are better, smarter, and could do their jobs to 10 times over. Even if that's true, um, having humility is one of the most important elements to, again, net worthing. Um, I, that's about all I have at the moment. If there are any questions about anything right now? Let's see, Q and A. Let's see, so anonymous attendee, what is your networking advice for those of us who are not looking for an entry level position, but have many years of experience in a specific field and are looking to enter a new facet of the industry? I worked in entertainment for two decades as a freelance editor. Um, okay, freelance editor as in um, editing like post-production for content or editor like journalists? I don't know if that person can do a follow-up or not. Um, but I'll try to answer that question the best I can. Um, TV editor, okay, great. 
Um, so networking advice for those of us who are not looking for entry level position, but have many years of experience in a specific field and are looking to enter a new facet of the industry. Um, that's actually a very good question. Um, if you look at one, it can be done. Um, I think, again, the best thing to do is research, um, understand what it is that you're doing. So if you're leading, if you were an editor for 20 years and now you want to go into directing or something, um, I think that's a very natural progression. Um, you know, and sometimes I think the biggest thing is go for it. You know, is it going to be one day or day one? And by that, I mean, look at a few careers. Um, Ava DuVernay was a publicist for 10 plus years. And now she's a uh, Oscar nominated and Emmy uh, nominated direct filmmaker, right? Um, so she went from PR into filmmaking. Justin Simeon, um, who created Dear White People, he was a publicist prior to. So <clears throat> there's a lot of opportunity um, to embark on a new journey. Um, you know, uh, even for myself, I'll give you an example. Um, you know, I've been doing PR now for uh, about seven, eight years, um, and but I grew up acting. I my degree was in theater at USC. Um, I joined SAG when I was in t when I was ten years old. I grew up doing uh, commercials, voiceover work, and all that. And now I'm in PR. And guess what? For me, PR is also not going to be where um, I finish in the entertainment industry. When I'm not doing my work that pertains to PR. Um, I am at home writing because I too want to, uh, you know, give a different perspective and voice to um, creative content through film, television, etc. Um, so I utilize my time um, to make sure that I'm taking the necessary steps in doing so. So if I know that I want to sell a show or if I know that I want to go into a writer's room, my sample's ready, right? So I'm doing the best thing that I can at the current moment by leveraging where I'm at to set myself up for that next space so if you're an editor the best thing that i can um you know share is you have worked with tons of directors at that point right you've worked with tons of producers at that point um the biggest piece of advice i have is let people know what you're trying to do right if you don't speak at a you know the southern saying is a closed mouth doesn't get fed so um let those people who are in your camp know what your next goals are um, because otherwise, if you don't, they assume that you're fine just being an editor and that's all you want to do for the rest of your life, right? So um, those are kind of the best nuggets I can offer for that question. Um, the next one is from, I think it's Yuki. Um, how should we appropriately bring some to the table when networking? Any etiquette? Um, that's a very good question. Um, you know, I'd say um, in terms of etiquette, yes. like. Don't, I wouldn't be so brash as to go, you know, oh, I have a film that you'll love. And if we make it together, then it'll make us both a lot of money, right? I think you have to be more strategic. So, um, you know, so in terms of etiquette, um, I think the best thing would be, I'm trying to think how, how to phrase that. It's essentially, um, Okay, I'll give you an example. So with that same studio executive at Columbia Pictures, at the time at USC, I was co-president of the Black Entertainment and Theatrical Association, which I think at this point no longer exists. Um, because I had that position at USC in undergrad, I approached him, I said, hey, um, I'm, you know, this, I'm doing this, I'm co-president of this organization, et cetera. And I said, how, you know, is there a way that we could do an advanced screening um, for of the film that I was interning on actually um, for the student body and eventually have, you know, that. And, and so when I asked him to do that, it wasn't just, and it be something that you can do for me. It actually was uh, served him too, because now it's taking that film and helping them reach an audience that otherwise could have been overlooked. Um, so that's kind of the best way that I see um, when I say bring something to the table, that's how it was. So when I approached him, I immediately had something that I could offer him, even though it was also going to establish a relationship that I still have to this day, 10 years later. Um, and I hope that answers the question. So it was basically, you know, really trying to um, tie that, try to just, that's why I say the research is important because when you have the research on an individual, which may seem creepy, but it's just doing your background. It's just no different from if you 
are going to an interview, you want to prepare and know everything about that company and the people that you're going to be speaking to. Right? Um, it's the same thing. So when you bring something to the table, it's finding those points of entry. And that might be a better way of, uh, of saying it is find your point of entry that don't just self-serve. Um, any insights on what values can mentees can possibly offer to the mentors? Hmm. You know, I've been mentoring um, through the Black Alumni Association's Leadership Through Legacy program for about four to five years now. And one thing for me is, honestly, with the mentees, just by being yourself, um, I learn, I love learning from my mentees. Um, there, I think the best mentorship relationship is for me is when um, sometimes the mentoring swaps, right? Things when you're discussing that um, end up actually kind of flipping the horse in its head, you know? Um, and um, I learn from my mentees all the time. So, I wouldn't say there's necessarily any tools to that. I think it would be one, how, how well do you have, how long have you guys been mentoring with each other? Um, what's that relationship like to know when you can offer advice or, and also as a mentee, be specific with what you want. Um, you know, I, I think that's the best thing is like, these are my goals. These are what I want to do. I'd love to also learn about you and what, you know, your journey was. I think that's the best thing is, um, for mentees to mentors show investment in them if these people are giving them their time to mentor you you also need to show you are invested in them as well um, because some of these relationships will last you um, for the rest of your careers um, this next one is from scarlett hi james i also studied theater and just graduated to be in theater congratulations that's what my emphasis was as well acting um, with the entertainment world being upside down um, Due to COVID and slowly opening up, how should I use my degree to the net greatest extent? What can I do while I wait for acting opportunities to become available? Mm. Um, a couple things there. That's a really good question, actually. Um, my job has changed drastically given the fact that usually I'm I travel eighty thousand plus miles a year um, domestic, just doing press trips and you know booking people on Good Morning America and doing screenings at festivals and film festivals and whatnot. Um, and so now I say the best thing for you that you could do is um, one, get again, get with your colleagues, peers. Um, with Zoom, now you don't even have to go anywhere, right? You guys should be practicing monologues, keep perfecting your craft. Um, you can coach each other through Zoom. Um, you know, that's the biggest thing for actors, especially, is just stay on your feet. Um, keep honing your craft, keep perfecting it. Um, look and see. I don't know if there's any casting work. Now that have been um, doing them via Zoom. You know, I, I haven't been in that that world in, in a little bit, but um, I would look up casting directors and see if they're offering, you know, casting workshops uh, via Zoom. I would look up uh, any other acting class you may be considered to doing, um, you know, Edgemar Center or, um, um, you know, any other studio, whether it's Groundlings or what have you, if it's improv, maybe they're doing Zoom um, sessions now you can look into. But that would be the best thing that I would say right now is how to, how to utilize technology, even if it's Instagram Live or whatever it may be, how to utilize technology to keep serving uh, what you're doing. I know a lot of people um, in entertainment are still pitching show ideas uh, via Zoom. Um, they're still auditioning, you know, via Zoom or sending audition tapes. Um, so yeah, I think that's the best thing. Um, is to just stay on your feet and, and use your use your peers and and do the research to see what is out there this last question uh, we have time for from Giselle could you share some tips on how to best approach colleagues when asking them to be a mentor yeah um, again I would say be open to them possibly saying no um, I only say that because again, with time, um, people are extremely busy. There's sometimes when people have reached, I've spoken at panels like this and people have asked for my information afterwards, um, which the same as Shireen who spoke a minute ago, the best way to get in contact with me is through LinkedIn. Um, just type my full name, James Ward III, uh, and you should find me, Oprah Winfrey Network. But I've had, I've given my email out to some people after panels and 
I, you know, I'm honest with them up front. I say, listen, I definitely want to be a resource for you, but sometimes um, I may not respond to your email for a matter of a couple of weeks to maybe a month. Um, it just depends on what's going on and how timely your request is in the email. If it's a general check-in, it'll probably take a couple of weeks. Um, if it's something like you need a letter of recommendation um, and we have that kind of relationship, then you know I'll bump it up to the top of my box because that obviously has a deadline attached. Um, but I'd be open to people saying no and don't take it personal. Um, uh, which kind of blends into this next um, question. What I think this might have to be the last one, Tanya. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine, James. Go ahead. Okay. Um, what are some things that seem like suck up things to do when networking and looking for connections? Um, I don't quite understand this. What that that question? Um, James, I would say maybe what not to do to appear in genuine. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Um, I would say, you know, things not to do when looking for connections is, um, one, be overbearing. So if it, even if you're doing a cold reach out, um, you know, via LinkedIn or what have you, don't write three paragraphs. Um, you know, that, that can be a little overwhelming for people. Um, the other thing I would say is, again, look for those points of entry. Um, that's the best thing that you can do. Um, and because my favorite way to network, to be honest, is when I'm introduced, <laughs> which, you know, you can't necessarily control that. But when you're introduced by someone who knows that person um, that you do know, uh, that automatically gives you a stamp of approval for people. And they're usually more open to um, seeing what it is you want to connect on. Um, Tiffany, do you know of any diversity initiatives currently available to jobs in the entertainment industry? Um, let me think on that and I can maybe um, either send the answers to the Alumni Association to get back with you. Um, but I, I, there are some things that are happening right now, especially with the current climate. Um, and of course, there are things that people know about already, depending on what you want to do in the entertainment industry, Tiffany. Um, Meaning like there are diversity writers, you know, there are diversity uh, writers programs, there are diversity acting programs through all the major networks like ABC, CBS. Uh, they have diversity showcases um, for all of those types of things. So, uh, but in terms of other initiatives, um, you know, if you're looking from an HR perspective or legal and entertainment, um, that'd be something I have to kind of do some digging and I can get back to you. So if that's something you need, um, just let, uh, Tanya or someone from the association know and I can do a follow-up through them. Perfect. Thanks so much for joining us today, James. Um, your Q&A was fantastic. We really liked the actionable tips um, that people can, can take to um, move their careers forward. Great. At the conclusion of the program today, I encourage you all to sign in onto the Trojan Network and put James's tips into practice. Send those direct messages to alumni, post on the discussion board, or lab chat with alumni online. We'll begin our next session shortly as our next speaker demonstrates how you can connect with alumni on the Trojan Network directly. Hey, welcome back, Trojan to Trojan Networking Day. We want to make sure that all of you are well equipped with the skills to maximize your presence on the Trojan Network platform. This brings me to our next program, Maximizing Your Digital Presence. You've created your resume and uploaded your LinkedIn file. Now what? With an influx of resume submissions online to messages requesting informational interviews, gain insight on how the Trojan Network can help you maximize that digital presence. I would now like to introduce Lauren Opgenorth. Lauren is Associate Director of Internships and Experiential Education at the USC Career Center. Lauren has more than 15 years of corporate and higher education experience. Currently, she manages the Internship and Experiential Education Department at the USC Career Center. In her portfolio, she manages in-person and online mentorships, domestic and international internships, and scholarship opportunities. Prior to USC, she conducted marketing and sales strategies for an Australian brand board game company. She has interacted with thousands of undergraduate and graduate students since her Trojan tenure began 
in 2005. Lauren, I hand it to you. Great, thank you so much, Tanya. I do appreciate that warm welcome. How's everyone doing today? Wonderful. Uh, this is the final stretch. After uh, my presentation, you will be able to actually utilize a number of these different strategies that have been suggested by the different panelists starting at 2.30. So just want to make sure that you're continuing to stay on board. Um, also, just wanted to let you know that before I jump into my PowerPoint as well as my live session, I do want to recognize that the Trojan family is one of the most powerful networks around. These, you know, we hear about the Trojan community, Trojans to Trojans, there's a lot of different ways to frame it, but these are all alums who want to pay it forward and really support you through purposeful connections. And that's something to where you can gain some advice, you can really um, be able to gain what they're going to provide you and then apply it to help you in your own career. So in knowing these intentions, USC has created this virtual space known as the Trojan Network and through this platform, students can connect with alums or even alums can connect with fellow alums. And so it's a great platform, really excited to share it with you. These alums that are on there, they are eager to give back. They wanna give you some insight in regards to your career, to the industry. And this is something that can be done virtually, which as mentioned earlier is probably the best time right now since we are working in this digital space. So with that, um, just want to mention that um, I'm going to go into a brief PowerPoint and I'll go ahead and share my screen. All right, so I know it might take a second to pop up on everyone's screen, but we should be good going forward. Um, let me just go ahead and take it to presentation mode. All right. So hopefully you can see the slides right now. Essentially, in order to access the Trojan Network, what you're gonna to need to do is first go to the Career Center's website. And specifically what you're gonna to wanna to do is go to that first tab, Students. Click underneath it. The very first thing is gonna be the Trojans to Trojans Initiative. And I know for the class of 2020, you might be thinking, I am a graduate, my degree's been conferred. We still wanna treat you as that student because there's some great features that you can certainly make use of. Not only will you be able to automatically, you know, register for this platform, there's actually a matching quiz that's gonna help you out with this feature. Um, you won't be transitioned to an alum until later on in the, in the year. So that's something that can happen over time. Um, oh, looks like it got exited out of the... There we go, sorry about that. What we wanna do specifically is just, again, to emphasize making sure you sign in as a student and then we will notify you when we can transition you over to that alumni account. That's something that'll happen typically for our May grads in August, but further information to come. When you're on this page, you can scroll all the way to the bottom and then you'll see the sign up for the Trojan Network. Once you click on that, what's gonna appear is the Trojan Network sign-in screen. Please see that big bright join the Trojan Network button this is the button you're gonna choose if you haven't created an account yet. If you have already created the account, then up in the right side, you're gonna see the sign in button. But for those first time users, click on the join, join the Trojan Network button and then this screen will pop up. Please, for, for students, we want you to select the USC Net ID. So whether it's for continuing students or those from the class of 2020, select the USC Student ID or Student USC Net ID for students and you'll be prompted to input your USC credentials. Once you've inputted that information, it is then going to pull your academic details and meaning less information to input, and it'll send you directly into some of these personal details. So of course, we always recommend that you include a photo. It brings your profile to life. We also want you to include a headline. For some of you, you've probably adapted this for your LinkedIn profile, and this is something that we would suggest that you try to, uh, tailor it a little bit. Think about what it is that you can offer. Um, what are you known for? What is, that, what is that piece that can add a little bit more about your credibility? So this is something that would go in that headline piece. And then of course your location. Now this is just the location for your profile. We recognize that people are moving or looking to relocate and things can definitely change. Once you're in the homepage of the platform, you will be able to make those changes. And I will show you that once we get to the live feature. So this is for part one. Then for part two, 
There's just a few more details that talk a little bit more about your involvement. It's pulling in the school information, but as far as your different clubs, how were you involved? Were you involved with maybe USG? Um, were you involved in some of the different student um, organizations? There's well over a thousand of them, so a number of different things that can come up. And so um, I know that there's gonna be people who are gonna be submitting questions through the Q&A. Um, we'll have the team filter through some of those. If any of them need my direct attention, I will be stopped in order to answer them accordingly. So please feel free to have those come through. And then the second piece of this involvement are your extra activities. These would be those additional things like, were you a transfer student? Were you a first gen or are or were you first gen student? Um, do you have active military duty? Are you a veteran? Things like that that will help you connect with others within those same communities. And then last but certainly not least, stick in there for a sec, is our professional responsibility agreement. And this is just to make sure that everyone will be conducting themselves in a proper manner. We want to make sure that everyone's being professional at all times and please use your best judgment. So this is not to be used for any sort of personal gain or other business. Um, otherwise, you could be subject to losing your privileges to the account. So if you agree to that, we'll ask you to sign off on the agreement and then hit next. Once you do so, it's going to automatically send you directly to the home screen. Now, in order for me to transition to the live feature, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing this. And then I am going to switch over to the actual platform. All right. So just going to make sure I get that confirmation to see that it's coming through. Hopefully it's done so. All right, we're gonna move forward with it then. Great, so students, again, because you've logged in as a student, by filling in those basic details, agreeing to the agreement, you will then be launched directly into this homepage. On the homepage, there's a few things I do wanna feature. Um, again, as a student, you will have this matching quiz up front here. When you click on the matching quiz, there's gonna be three specific questions that it's gonna ask you. What location are you looking to seek? What about some of your additional extracurricular activities and then industry? Then it's gonna pull who are your top five alum connections. It's wonderful because when this information pops up, not only if you click on their actual name and I'm not gonna do it because I don't want to lose the connection, but um, by clicking on the actual name, it's gonna give you a snapshot of what is their experience? What does that look like from previous experience to current roles? How are they able to help out and some of those specifics? If you're in a rush and you'd rather just bookmark their information, you can click this tab right here and it'll save all your bookmarks on the right side of this page. Or if you're thinking, you know what, this is one of my strongest connections, I want to send them a message right away, you can actually do so. And by sending that message, if you click on the link, and I'm not going to do it because I did it in the previous session, but if you click on the link, there's then going to be a set of templates that will pop up that will then say, are you interested in networking? career exploration or otherwise, and a template will actually appear for you. So rather than thinking, oh no, I'm gonna have to start at a blank screen, this is where it'll help guide that conversation. You can change up, you know, are you looking to conduct an informational interview? Did you wanna get some career advice? You can tailor it accordingly. And what's so great about these messages is that as you type in different words, there'll be different pop-ups that appear. So for instance, we always encourage students to add a greeting. Don't just say, hey, or you know, pretending that they're sending like a text message. I always tell students, hey is what horses eat. Instead, you might wanna say something like, hi or dear, good morning, good afternoon. Have a nice greeting so then it welcomes them, lets them know that you're not just you know, kind of one track mind thinking about your own gain, but you would rather really prefer to set up and establish this relationship before kind of moving forward with um, anything else at that point. So that's really great. Something else that pops up on these individual templates is that if you at any point in time say the word job, it's gonna say, you know what? I see that you've indicated the word job. Rather than asking for it you know, in advance, why don't you establish the relationship, build that foundation, and then maybe you can ask about breaking into the field and things like that. So something to consider. It's really great though that there are all these mechanisms because I know sometimes the first bit is just getting your foot in that door. So here's a little, so there's that. Um, to show you a little bit more about what's on the home screen, this would be the connection section. So for any of these messages that you have um, been able to process, they're all going to be in here. If I had any that were ongoing, they would appear, appear here. Otherwise, they will be found in your 
inbox right up here, and it's going to track all your active messages or those that have been archived. We understand that sometimes when you meet with someone, it's going to be a one and done, but you might decide you want something to be a little bit more lengthy. And within this section, there's also going to be the opportunity for you to either schedule a meeting time with a calendar feature or then do video or phone calls. So it's really nice. Um, in addition, it also allows you to write down your goals. So for those longer term mentorships where you maybe wanted someone to review a copy of your resume, go through a mock interview, maybe talk about some general goals, that's something that would all then be here in the connection section or otherwise in this inbox. And then the tasks, these just relate to some of the items that have been found through the connections. And then these posts, these directly relate to the discussion board topics. So up until this point, there have been a number of different alums who have posted the information there, and or student and or alums who have posted there, and then alums and other students can go ahead and build off of that. There's been a lot of discussion going on lately, so feel free to jump into that at 2.30, so something to consider. And if you're looking for some additional tools or resources that would really help give you a little bit more insight, then you can check out this resource feature. It talks about everything from demystifying networking. You know, a lot of times people give strategies but don't necessarily show how it's done. When I get to this next tab, I'll, I'll give you a little bit more insight to that, but this will help you break it down. It'll also talk about what are some of the virtual, virtual recruiting tips to help out in today's new normal. Um, as well as, you know, what are the benefits of having a mentor? And is it someone that you should talk to, you know, how often? So some of those tips have been really helpful. All right, in order to allow for a smooth connection, I'm gonna stop the share feature real quick, just so that I can go back and transition over to the networking tab. So what I'm going to do, just make sure it comes up on my end and it has. So now I'm gonna go back to our Zoom presentation and go ahead and share my screen again. And here we go, it should just be a couple seconds. Just wanna wait. All right, so hopefully everyone can see then the networking tab specifically here. Hopefully it's come up for everyone. All right, great, wonderful, thank you for the clarification. So again, first point of entry is gonna be that home screen, but the second tab right here, network, this is probably one of my favorite sections, just because this is where it brings the whole Trojan network to life. And so something that I do wanna feature first is that right here, you can see here are the number of online users. Right now, it seems like everyone's preparing for that 2.30 moment. There are 368 alums that are waiting for you in order to connect and share advice and really help you jumpstart that career. Um, I know in the earlier session, people were talking about, well, who's still actively searching for opportunities? Well, part of that is you got to go out and it's not what you know, but who you know, so you'll have your chance soon. But in the meantime, what you'll notice is that some people have the solid green dot versus the open one. That solid green dot indicates that they are available right now. And in order to help you out, there's this chat now button. Very similar to the message button that appeared on the previous screen, when you hit chat now, there'll be another window that pops up and it'll say, Hi, Sophia, I see that you're available. Do you have some time to chat? You send that and then you'll be off to that inbox of sorts and then it'll keep that dialogue of your discussion. It's a really great opportunity. Certainly I would suggest, you know, clicking on their profile in order to see a little bit more of their experiences and such, but it's great to know that there's well over 360 alums that are waiting for you right here and right now. Um, something also that I wanted to highlight is based on what you indicated in your profile, you're also going to have other different listings of those people who have experience by industry or location or even by some of your different extracurriculars. So if that's something that would be of interest to you as well, we want to be able to highlight that and we can certainly do so. Um, if you're thinking, you know what, it's great that I've seen this snapshot, but I know exactly what I want to do for my focus, then you can certainly do a location search. You can do an industry search, or there's even more filters. And under those more filters, there's a section that allows you to do a help. You know, you can help by a particular topic. And some of my favorite topics there are the applying to graduate school or professional school. What are some of the career or industry trends? In addition to networking, a lot of times people say, oh, yeah, I know I need a network, but what does that really mean? That means maybe you want introductions to others in the field. Maybe you wanna do some mock interviews with someone just to see, you know, I've never done a virtual interview before. Can you maybe walk me through or can we practice it through this platform? By all means, feel free to do that with any of these alums. And then also transitioning to life after school. 
there's really a lot of great topics that come through a lot of these different filters and you can definitely conduct that search to see what might be best for you. Um, also, you'll notice here on the right side, there is the search alerts. So I know sometimes you might think, gosh, I feel like I have to go onto the platform every day. Why don't you set a search alert? So if there's a new alum in a particular field, you can then get that information sent to you. It's a really great way in order to gain that information um, as well as feel like, you know, you can then get um, updates accordingly. Also, you'll see that a lot of these views, they're seen as business cards of sorts. There's another view that is known as the map view, and this will actually show you a worldwide map to show where all the alums are placed. And I, I did search it earlier this morning, and it was great to see that literally the lifelong and worldwide comment is, is definitely alive and well with our Trojan family. So it's really exciting to see that they are participating on this Trojan Network platform. All right, moving right along. Other things that I wanted to potentially show. Um, in the discussion board, you know what I, I think it would be very beneficial to be able to see what some of the messages do look like. Um, so I am going to um, stop share here just so I can go ahead and switch that over so you can see, well, what does it look like from the Let's Connect scene? Um, I tried to give you as best of a visual, but I think it's really helpful to see that when you're actually working within it. So let me go ahead and bring that back to show you. All right, so it's gonna pop up again. And here you will see that I wanted to try to connect with LaToya. And it's great because not only do you see what some of her current and past experience looks like as well as her background and when uh, she might have graduated here are then these are the templates that i was saying that you can actually take and modify just so that i can then show you um, what are some of the pop-ups that are actually pre-populated within the trojan network to help you with that communication of course keep it short but not too short we recommend a certain amount of words and currently there's about 41 here to get started so maybe add a little bit more about yourself where are you in this process are you a current student or did you recently graduate and you're actively, you know, you know, trying to view all your different options? You have all that there. Here's my favorite, keep it professional. Trying, try using hi instead of hey. So you have that feature right there. And again, as you make those changes, it will then adjust that text accordingly. And because I have indicated right here, you know, the job or internship, please be courteous and ask questions and who knows what might happen once you build that rapport. Again, it's that constant reminder of what can we do in order to remain professional throughout that time. So that's something that we've got there. Um, I do see, I was gonna say, we have maybe just a couple more minutes. So I just wanted to, um, I can stop sharing there and go to just one more screen just so you can see what else um, can be featured there. But I did wanna show you the share feature, which is that last tab specifically within the Trojan Network. And then specifically, it's just coming up on my side. Appreciate your patience. So here we go. What you will notice is that with this share screen, there's several different ways that you can then share this with fellow Trojans. So in particular, if you wanna send an email, maybe to a friend or someone that you went to school with saying, did you know about this? Here's a great way, great way to get involved and give back. It's a wonderful way to get started. Um, there's also the referral link or you can even share on social media, either through Facebook, Twitter, or then LinkedIn. So that's something. Um, all right, well, I know there's been a lot of different talks about all the different, or you know what, up here I wanted to show you. Under the name here, with this little drop down arrow, if you push that button, that's when you can then update your profile. So if things change, if you wanna add maybe new experiences, different clubs or organizations, anything like that, you can do so there. Um, and then that's how that's gonna be managed. If you have different alerts or notifications, um, maybe someone has responded to one of my inquiries, then it would pop up here. Just know that in addition to receiving the notification on the system, you will also be getting an email. Just the email is a basic automatic response saying you have a new message within the platform. So that's something to consider. All Hi, right. Lauren, we have a few yes. questions. Sure, great. So well, the, I the, will. Oh yeah. 
Yeah. No problem. So the first one is I've sent a I've sent messages to a number of fellow Trojans in Trojan Network a couple weeks ago, but haven't gotten a response. Should I follow up with them? If so, how should I write the follow up message? Thank you so much. Sure, great question. I would definitely suggest following up. As you know, everyone's schedule has been thrown for a little bit of a loop and sometimes people haven't been as timely as they've been previously. Just saying something as simple as dear so-and-so, I appreciate you participating in this Trojan network. While I know you're busy, I would love the opportunity to connect. Please let me know if you have some time over the next you know, week or two. Um, if that doesn't work with your schedule, please suggest an alternative and I can make time. So recognize, you know, you don't want to, um, you want to make sure that you're courteous through this whole process. You don't want to call anyone out, but you just want to maybe have that additional reminder be plugged there. Just know that on the um, alumni side, there are various nudges that are being sent to the alums to just to remind them and almost ping them of, hey, you know what? There's someone that's waiting there for you. Would you mind following back up? But definitely. That's a great awesome. one. Awesome. So I'm going to kind of expand on this question a little bit. Sure. Um, so if you're chatting with someone, how can you kind of move them towards eventually connecting with you on a phone call to have more of an in-depth conversation? Sure. Well, what's great about the Trojan Network is you can actually do either voice or video call through the platform. And so if you wanted to build off of that, you know, you might say, I have some initial questions, but would you be open, you know, now that I have a little bit more of a foundation with, of this industry or field or however you're exploring, you know, would you mind if I followed up in a week or two with some additional questions after I've had a chance to maybe do my own research? So you don't just want it to feel like it's so one-sided. You want to be able to put in your own work and be able to add to it ultimately. Awesome. And someone is hoping if you could kind of explain what the leaderboard is um, a little bit more. The leaderboard, yes. So that leaderboard is based on who is leading the discussions or who has provided um, the different, who has provided the most responses. So, you know, sometimes USC can be known for being competitive, maybe with our athletics and such, but it's just a way to try to keep people engaging, thinking, wow, okay, this is another way that I can engage and provide my insight. So um, if it's something you want to participate in, again, please make sure to keep it professional and helpful. Um, but yes, it is another way to try to incentivize those to participate. Awesome. Uh, this is a little bit of a logistical question. Sure. As a 2020 grad, how okay. will our login change once we no longer have access to our NetID? Also, when do you think that will change? Great question. This is something that we are currently in the process of going on. What's interesting, when we look at the class of 2020, we recognize that there are graduates for May, August, as well as December. Um, what we are going to do is we know at least for our May grads, they're going to have at least until August. However, we will be providing communication to those individuals, letting them know how their accounts will be transitioning to alum ones. So more information to come. We are working on the back end with this right now, and we certainly will have more details. We have a little bit of time, but we will certainly be providing details. We're not just going to shut you out. We want to make sure that you will continue to be able to have these discussions moving forward. Wonderful. Um, the next question is, is it appropriate as an undergrad student to reach out to current grad or doctorate students? Certainly you can do so. What's, um, what's unique about our program, or specifically with the Trojan Network, so the Trojan Network allows students to connect with alums as well as alums to connect with fellow alums. Um, the platform doesn't allow student to student connection. However, in other school-based entities of this platform, it does, but through the Trojan Network, it doesn't allow the student to student piece, but we would certainly encourage students to network with anyone within that Trojan family. You're definitely gonna get different experiences from someone who is in a graduate program. You know, they've at least been through undergrad and can certainly offer some pearls of wisdom, but it's gonna be different from someone who is in a full-time role, but all, all valuable information. Definitely. Mm -hmm. um, this one last question I've gotten here, and if, and if anyone wants to, to ask any more, we've got time for maybe two. Um, but this question here is, I'm a new graduate student and will start my program from August, but I can't sign up for the Trojan Network. Is it because I'm not a current student yet? 
Correct. So very similarly to some of our other different platforms like Connect SC, which is our job and internship platform and online resources, you will have access to the platform once you have enrolled in classes. So for a lot of students that will happen when the program starts or closer to orientation, same thing applies with this Trojan network. Um, we just want to make sure that it's for currently enrolled students. And so there have been some people that have tried to sign in and they do get that error message. I appreciate your willingness to want to join in um, early on to connect with this Trojan family, but there's gonna be a little bit of a delay, just a few more weeks and then you will be able to have access. And Perfect. we do have one more question, but I think on, this, on our ending slide, we'll have that. It's, is there a link you can provide us to get started? So just so you all know, at the end of this presentation, we'll, slow, we'll, we'll show a slide with the link and then we'll also type it in the chat. But we definitely have time for one more question if there's any other um, questions anyone wants to ask. And, all right. I think we're good. Thank you, right. Ashley. Oh. Mm -hmm. they, I was thank just gonna say, thank you so much for those questions. I hope that you will now utilize this Trojan network, gain some great professional relationships. And if there's anything else that we can do to help, let us know, otherwise, fight on. Thank you so much, Lauren, for joining us today for that great tutorial. Um, as she just mentioned, please sign on to the Trojan network and put what you've learned all day today to use. Send direct messages to alumni, post on the discussion board, or live chat with alumni online. And with that, we wish you much success in your future endeavors. Please stay connected with your Trojan family and fight on.